嗨，大家今天过得好吗？欢迎回到理科太太。我们一下子就到了十月了，那十一月到二月是流感的高峰期。因为我家中有幼儿，我又飞来飞去，而且我不愿意冒着可能会生病一个月的风险，所以我前两天就去打了，到现在还略有感觉。所以，我们今天就来讨论一下普通感冒跟流感有什么不一样吧。感冒跟流感都是呼吸道的疾病，只是病毒种类不同。那流感就是流感病毒所引起的。那因为他们有些初期的症状很类似，所以常常被搞混。简单的。说呢，你在流感初期的时候啊，会非常像普通的感冒，可是突然你的症状就会变得很严重，发烧啊、发冷啊、全身肌肉痛啊，而且要过几周才会好。如果没有真正控制下来的话，有可能会变成肺炎。那普通感冒就是慢慢变严重啊，伴随就是咳嗽啊、流鼻水、鼻塞等等的一些常见的症状。那大人一般比较容易发烧，可是幼儿的话就可能比较容易发烧。通常不用吃药，那一周内自己会好。美国的疾病管制局啊，它网页上有列一个表格，那基本上你如果是普通感冒的话，你比较不会发烧，比较不会发冷，然后你也不会有全身性的疼痛啊，或者是全身性不舒服的状况。普通感冒就是比较局部性的。我之前感冒基本上好几个礼拜，那是普通感冒，不是流感。我之前鼻塞有用鼻塞喷剂，那我喷完之后整个人超不舒服的，鼻子变得很痛，原因是因为那个喷剂它会把你的血管收缩，所以限制你的血。一通过就是喷的那个鼻腔的部位。然后黏膜也跟着变少，那黏膜变少就会变得很干，干就会痛，所以后来我索性不喷了。然后我老公就跟我讲说啊，用那些鼻的喷剂不能连续用超过三天，它会反弹，会让你的鼻塞反而更严重，所以这点大家要注意一下。那我们现在就邀请南加大的药学博士 John 来帮我们简单的介绍一下感冒药啊、流感啊，还有一些大家常见的迷思。好了 ，Hi everyone， 我是。Li Ke Xianzhen, my name is John. I'm going to start talking about medications that people can buy over the counter to treat the symptoms of a cold or flu. The first one are pain relievers. So these are commonly seen in a lot of medications. They're used to treat, for example, headache, fever, and other chills related to a flu. The most important thing to watch out for is if you're taking other medications. Uh, for pain and fever, because you could be doubling up on the dose if you're not paying attention, and that could be potentially harmful. If you're on any kind of blood thinner, there are some patients who have heart problems. They may be on another medication to thin their blood. Some of the pain relievers, like ibuprofen or aspirin, are also blood thinners, so you have to be careful not to take them together. Moving on, then you get to kind of the nasal cavity. The most common problems are either a runny nose, which is a lot of mucus. From your nose or congestion, we have trouble breathing. And the two most common classes of drugs to treat these are for runny nose or antihistamines, and for congestion are just nasal decongestants. The most important thing to look out with runny nose medications is that some of them can make you very drowsy. There are some newer ones that are less sedating, and so that's a problem for you. Look out for those kind of medications. The other problem with nasal Decongestants is that because they're constricting the blood vessels to the nose. If you're somebody with high blood pressure, for example, diabetes,、uh, kidney problems, glaucoma, these are all problems that could be affected by anything cutting off the blood flow or pregnant women because the fetus needs good blood flow. And so there are cold and cough medications specifically targeted to people with heart problems. So try to look for those. The next class is cough. And before I talk about the medications used for cough, I just want to emphasize that it's important to drink plenty of water. Essentially, your body is coughing to try to force out the phlegm in your chest, and that is where the virus or the bacteria or whatever it is is kind of being gotten rid of. But you need to cough, and then the water kind of makes it easier for that to happen. Two medications you'll see are cough suppressants. And something called an expectorant, something that causes you to cough more. The part that people kind of don't understand is that, especially during the daytime, you want to take something that stimulates your cough, like guaifenesin or robitussin. And this is kind of a misconception because you want to get rid of the phlegm. Ultimately, that is what gets rid of the cough. So there is a cough suppressant, and you want to use those if the cough is really bothering you. It's Especially if it's at night time, you have trouble sleeping, and the cough is keeping you up. That is probably the time to take that medication. Now, the other topic I want to talk about is prevention, which is 
essentially good hand washing and the flu vaccine. And so the first thing is make sure you wash your hands correctly. That means at least 10 seconds with soapy water under warm water. The next topic I want to talk about is the flu vaccine. And this is very important for prevention and spreading of the virus. So I think a little bit of knowledge will help people really understand why it's important to get the vaccine. So what the vaccine is, is that they're taking different strands of the virus usually four of them that they've isolated as being most likely to cause the infection and then they take a small part of it and put it in the vaccine and what this does is it activates your immune system kind of getting it ready to fight off the infection if you encounter the virus one common misperception is people think well I never get the cold, I never get the flu I'm fine, like, and if I do it won't be that bad, why do I have to get it? so even if you don't get the virus infection you could be carrying it without any symptoms the people who really suffer the most from the flu virus are the very young, the very old, and people who have weakened immune systems and that can lead to more severe health problems. So you're not just getting the vaccine for yourself, you're getting it for um, people around you, right? Your loved ones. That's part of epidemiology. And the last group I want to talk about are some alternative medications that people take. There are some very famous brands that sell high doses of vitamin C. Now they're not, as far as I know, harmful. So if you feel like they're making you better, then by all means, you know, please take them. But there's no, there's not really much medical data to support their use. I think it's more of a placebo effect. And I know the companies will probably send somebody to beat me up later. One medication that I think there is data for is zinc. They kind of stimulate your immune system and they'll help fight off the infection or shorten the duration once you develop it. Now 嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯